I'm just going to go through gently um, what I do for podcasts. I'll, I'll tell you how I got started and I'll tell you what I do. It's, it's not the definitive, this is how you do it. There is no other way. There are lots of different ways to make them. Um, but I'm sort of tailoring this, first of all, into my own experience, but also um, mindful of budget as well. In that I'm going to show you a way of doing it for free. Uh, well, yes, sort of. Uh, but we'll come to that as we go. Um, the way I like to do these things as well, this I haven't got a PowerPoint. I'll apologise to you all now. There's no PowerPoint. Um, I prefer to describe, I'll show you, I'm going to share my screen so that I'll show you what I do and I'll talk. Um, if there's something that you don't understand, just shout out. Um, if you want to turn your, your mic off, then every time you creak your chair, everyone will see you sort of, um, that, that might, it, it's up to you. Um, but uh, it's, if you want, if I'm explaining something and you think, no, could you go through that bit again? Um, or there's a question to, that allied to it that pops into your head, um, then please just ask. I'm not, I'm not precious about, um, uh, about how this is going to do. And to be honest with you, usually I find that the, the, the groups that I work with, um, the, the, the chattiest, the ones that actually ask the most questions tend to get the most out of it. Um, and so I can be blithely talking and you miss something. Um, the other thing to say is that we will have a short break. Um, I won't s sit here talking at you for two hours. Um, so round about sort of um, 10 to 5 to, we'll stop for about 10 minutes, five minutes or so, just to, just to relieve, relieve you of my voice or just to have a little walk around or get another cup of tea or something like that. So um, wherever there's a natural break, um, we'll take one just on the hour. This is, um, so it's two hours today, and then there's a follow-up um, session, which is an hour next week. Um, and so you can have some homework. Um, I'm going to uh, talk about podcasts and how I got into them and what I use them for, um, for the first part. The second part is then going to be um, how I actually record them and how I edit them. Um, and that will get slightly technical, but I'm going to show you, and we're going to go very slowly um, and just show you all the, the ways that I do it. Um, and then I'm going to let you have a go at recording something yourselves in the week interim. Um, and then when we come back, um, next week, we'll have a look at how you would publish it um, so that you would actually have some, you'd have a go at doing some recordings. I say it's homework. You don't have to do it. You might just think, oh, good heavens, this looks way too complicated for me. Or you might already know how to do it and you just think, fine. Um, but that's the general order of um, order of ceremony um, for today and next week. So podcasting. Um, I started um, I started doing the podcast. Uh, it was December of 2019 um, and what happened was in the autumn of 2019 um, somebody from uh, a local energy um, consortium, a, a group who were wanting to buy a, a windmill um, to um, generate their own electricity, um, want, uh, was talking to me and she was really into, um, into podcasting and she used to be a communications officer with the US Army, um, so she knew her stuff um, and she complained that um, th there, was, th there were no uh, studios for her to actually record a podcast. If she wanted to go and use a studio to record something, she had to go all the way to Llanetli, um to use um, the public studio. I think it's as part of a library or somewhere like that. Now, my project at Planet is all about um, uh, helping any sort of rural community group, any rural um, project with their IT. So I thought, well, fine, this sounds perfect. I will set up a, a small studio at Planet that the public can use. 
Um, and you can use, actually, incidentally, it's there, we did it. And I, I spoke, so I, I said to, it was Brenda, Brenda Dane. So I was saying to Brenda, it's, you know, we've got it all set up, it's ready to go. Um, and she carried on with her podcast. She did actually, now after I'd set it all up, she found a different way of doing it and um, she didn't use it in the end. Um, but it was there. And it piqued my interest because I knew about podcasts and I, I thought they were something that was uh, decades ago. I thought that, that, that fad has passed, surely. Um, but I thought I'll find out what they are. And for me personally, the way I work out anything with IT is just to have a go. Just try it out and see what it is and then figure out what the problems are as I, as I try, as I, um, as I find, as they crop up. So I thought I'll um, I'll figure out what podcasts are. I spent a lot of time looking on the internet, a lot of time tri uh, trialing different things, reading books. But the most sort of experience I got was just doing it. So I recorded my first podcast in, as I say, December of um, of 2019. And here's my first tip: is that. Um, I, I, I was I was rude about her to 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 Jesse and and Maria, and I'll be rude about it to you, but I'm sure she wouldn't mind. Is that the first tip? Is that if you're going to have somebody on your podcast, choose somebody who is chatty, who talks a lot. And so um, I don't know if you've ever met Gitty Coates from Have a Hub, but people say, "Oh my goodness, she can talk. Oh, she's really good at talking." So um, they make a podcast really easy. Um, because if you're trying to force the conversation, force the, um, the, 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 the to and fro of the, of the chat to, to, to go, it just it sounds it, you can hear it, and it sounds strained on the actual, um, on the podcast itself. So Gitty was my first one. I know Gitty, and I knew her well anyway, so she was quite relaxed um, to do it. Um, and basically the first podcast was what is have a hub what are you doing and what's happening with the um, the post office in Hatford West and it it was it went, went all right and I I, I, it, I put it out there and then the following week um, we happened to have the Prince's Trust in doing training in Planet so I got one of their instructors to come and sit and and chat and he was a very chatty guy and spoke about the prince's trust and how they work and things like that and it just sort of followed from that so my first thing is pick your victim um get somebody who is chatty who can talk um doesn't have to be overconfident or anything but you just have to just be able that you can have a, an easy talk to um, the other thing though that I found and that even people, for example, even Gitty, um, as soon as you sit down and there's a microphone on them, they get, uh, people get nervous. And that is the second thing. So I was just before everybody started joining, I was talking to Jesse and Maria about how, um, you know, just the general, how, how what I'm going to talk to you about today. And I'm going to spend quite a lot of time talking about before you even record the podcast, um, because you can make life very much easy for yourself if you do a few things before you record anything at all. Um, and I found that the main thing that you want, you want a nice sort of flow, you want an easy sort of chat, you don't want people to sound ill at ease, you want, you want it to nice nice sort of conversation and that's not going to happen if the person who you're talking to um, is feeling nervous um, and is unsure about what you're going to do. Um, I'm not trying to do anything like the Today programme and get politicians and put them on the spot or anything like that. I'm wanting nice, uh, getting information out and just talking. Um, Every, lots of different podcasts have a different style. Um, for me, what I tend to do is I do a one-to-one -one conversation. It's like an interview. Um, so I'll have somebody that I am actually sat opposite um, with a microphone and I'm talking to them or lately um, has, have been on the phone or even over Zoom. Um, and so I can 
I ask a question, they answer it, I respond. And so it's very much a two way type of thing. Um, there are plenty of podcasts though that are just a monologue where someone just talks about a particular topic. Um, and if you have a particular um, be in your bonnet about one particular thing, an area of expertise that you want to talk about, um, it's a very good way of getting information out. Where I, the way I listen to my podcasts is usually I listen in the car. I'll download them um, on iTunes. I've got an iPhone, so I'll download them on iTunes and I plug it into my car. And then while I'm driving, it's how, like having a radio program in the back while I'm doing something else. A lot, and that seems to be the sort of thing with podcasts is that a lot of people seem to be doing something else while they're doing the podcast. Um, again, I'll do it if I'm doing anything like... Uh, I was hanging a door um, ages ago. I hate hanging doors. Um, but I was hanging a door um, a couple of weeks ago. So I thought, right, I'll do this. I'll try and make it a nice thing. And I can just download the podcast, listen to that, and just have that going. So anything that you don't have to be, um, uh, you can just have on the background that you would be having a normal radio on for, that's the podcast. The reason I say that is it's worth having in mind um, that people probably aren't going to be listening to your podcast with a notepad and pen. Um, it, it, you want it to sort of flow so that the information comes out, um, but it's, it, you've got to ease it. That, that's how usually people will be listening. They'll be doing something else while they're, while they're actually, um, uh, while they're listening to it. And for that reason, that's why I go for nice and informal and a chat. Um, because I'm doing the two-way chat with somebody, let's say, for example, like Gitty, who, who, who can talk, um, is that I can then ask a nice, simple, open question and get her to talk um, and then just follow it up with another open question so that it's not listening to me talking. The podcast isn't about me. I'm just fa facilitating the other person to talk about their, their project or whatever they're doing. And in this sense, it's really good for community projects. And I've been surprised at the amount of actual information, even though it's something that's all but just in the back of your ear while you're driving or something like that. But the amount of information that you can get across um, in, in a podcast is surprising. I'm saying it's informal, it's relaxed, um, but it's not, um, that's not to, to, to mean that you can dismiss, you would dismiss it. I think it's a valid way of actually talking about things and getting information over. And as Maria said, um, when you've got it published, you've got a link to it, you can send it to your, your funders or to other interested parties, and then they can use it and they can, they can hear what, uh, um, what, what you're going to be doing. So the first thing to think about is that if you wanted a podcast, what would you do? What is it for? Who are you trying to impress? Or is it just for general interest? Uh, the podcast that I did was called The Planet Podcast, and I still do it. And I recorded one yesterday, actually, um, in, a, in a wood just outside of Skelton Manor um, with Tia Coyd. Um, but I'll come back to that one. Um, and the nice thing about the Planet podcast is that because we have different people, so we've helped have a hub, um, the Princess Trust came to us, um, Tia Coyd worked with us, and so it's a nice way of showing the varied different groups that we've worked with. Um, and, and, and over the, um, the, the run of all the different episodes, um, you can see gradually the sort of, sort of pattern is that they tend to be about well-being, they tend to be about community, and they tend to be focused on Pembrokeshire. Ninety percent of them are on Pembrokeshire, um, and it's just sort of general interest. But there is a link always back to Planet. Um, so, for for example, for your own group, um, you might be wanting to say, "Well, I want to promote who you know." Um, your particular organization but you but by doing that you can be talking to all the people that are associated with it um 
actually. Um, I, I saw that um, with, with men's sheds. Um, I see there's somebody, I did a podcast early on with Robert Vicentana um, of Men's Sheds Cymru. And again, he just being able to talk about um, the stories of the people who go to the men's shed, um, you will be then sort of making the, 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 the promoting the men's shed in itself without actually talking about men's shed in, it, in, in, its, in itself. A, a, sort of um, really obviously you're talking about the stories of the people who are there and over the run you get the sort of it comes out as to as to what it actually is and that's the point is that with a podcast it's a series it's not a one-off um, piece of audio now what I'm going to talk about here you could do if all you want to do is one interview and you want to record that and you want to put it on social media or on your website, then what we're going to talk about today, you can do. But the point of a podcast is it's like the archers. It carries on. Um, there's another one. Now, it doesn't have to end on a cliffhanger or, or anything that follows on to the next particular episode. The episodes can be discrete and completely different. But um, that they are a series. Um, so... Uh, if you, if you want a podcast, remember it's going to be more than one episode. For me, I tend to um, record, uh, record an episode of, of usually about half an hour, round about the half an hour mark for, for putting an episode out. There are other people who record, who have them like commercial ones you'll, you'll, you'll listen to that are an hour and a half or two hours or something like that. Half an hour is enough for me, I think. Um, it's also enough for the person that you're talking to um, and you're putting them through all of this. Um, and the person listening as well, if you're talking about your conversation, I would rather, uh, about your organisation, I would rather have a lot of little stories that f formed one big sort of fitted together like a jigsaw to give an overall impression of your organisation than one massive two hour monolith of a of a of a of an episode but if you've got two hours to talk about you do it i mean it will work um however you do this but for me i do half an hour um just for nice and short and also because um my drive into planet takes about half an hour so i can listen to it and that's about how long it takes um so the things that you need to decide before you even start doing this is um, what you're going to use your, your podcast for. Is it advertising your organisation? Is it showing your funder that things are actually progressing? Is it just general interest? Um, are you then the next thing is, are you going to do an interview or is it going to be a monologue? Um, talking, just you talking. Um, and then the next thing to think about is how are you actually going to record it? Do you need to buy a lot of expensive equipment? Well, um, buying a lot of expensive equipment does make the process easier, but you don't have to. Um, and as I say, there is a studio set up at Planned in Narbeth um, that people, if you want to get in touch with me, you can use one. Um, but I'm going to show you now um, what I use, and this is what I took. So this is actually smelling of wood smoke at, at the moment. This is a, a little recorder. Um, let me see if I can get it. So it's got little sort of dials on the front and some connectors in at the side, which allow me to connect um, microphones in. And I can put microphones with leads um, this sat, sat in the middle of the, um, of the woodland clearing and I had three microphones off to the side with the different people talking. Um, when I pressed, so we, we started talking, we started recording the thing and um, when it does it, when it finishes recording, it records it and puts it onto an SD card, um, like a camera, camera card. And I can take this card out, put it into my computer and the different microphones. So the different people with a different microphone are all recorded separately on here. And it makes um, editing and putting it all together much easier. 
Um, and you can also, because some everyone's got a different microphone, if somebody's got a loud voice, um, you can alter that just track. And if someone's got quite a quiet voice, you can boost that up and make them so that everybody's got comes out the same um, in theory. Um, but um, so you can buy one of these. This one's quite an expensive one. Um, and confusingly, it's also made by a company called Zoom. Um, now, I'm going to show you, this is what, um, let me get to my, here we are. So I'm going to share my screen. Um, so that's our Zoom. So the Zoom one that I often use, um, and actually um, uh, Together for Change are going to have a go at using this, um, is it's a small recorder like that, made by the same people. And you can see it has different levels moving up and down. I would show you the real one, but together for change, you've pinched mine. So um, we've got we've got this this sort of setup, nice and easy. That grill on the top is a um, is a microphone. Um, it takes it runs off batteries, has an SD card in. You can also, if you see, there's a little um, uh, three and a half mil jack. You can connect that to an external microphone or more handily you can connect that to your computer so um or or a or a phone so that if you're doing a mobile recording you could record um that way more of that later um but it's a nice little one um quite sort of dinky you can change all these sort of layouts on the top um but it's quite easy to use you just pretty much um press record and it goes when I was talking about this to Maria and Jesse um, a week or so ago, uh, Maria was saying, is it like a dictaphone? And I was saying, well, it is, yes, I suppose. Um, and I've been thinking more about it, but the difference between it and a dictaphone is that it can record multiple tracks at the same time. The dictaphone just records uh, whatever the audio is, um, whereas this one can record separate tracks, um, which it, again, you don't need but it makes editing much easier. Editing the audio is the, um, is the bulk of the iceberg. Actually doing the interview itself is the small, is the small, is easy, the pleasant part. Actually editing it together and getting a nice, um, a nice piece of uh, audio out of it um, is the bit that is tricky. And that's the bit that takes it takes takes time and it's just practice. That's what I'm going to show you later after we've had a break. But these things here, um, I know there are other places to buy them, but just for example, I've just gone into this today. They cost about £130 um, to buy one of them. You can get different kits with different bits to come with them. You don't get an SD card with it. You have to buy one yourself. They come with batteries. So you put an SD card in and it just works. For some reason, they're showing these with a micro SD, it, a full, full fat um, SD card will work. You, um, I wouldn't bother, bother buying all these extra kits pieces. Um, it's just more to go wrong and it's more to drop and lose. Um, and to be honest with you, when I'm doing my interviews for a podcast, I try to keep the techni technology to a minimum because I want to concentrate on the interview and I want to chat, you know, and talk to people. Um, and if I'm messing around with wires and things all the time, then um, then it appears rude to them. It, it appears as though I'm not I'm not listening. Um, but also, the more I fiddle, the more things can go wrong. So this is a lovely one in that you just press record and it records. Um, so if you did want to buy some kit, I'd recommend that. Um, I, that's what I use. Um, and there's different versions of it. So there's, um, as I say, there's the Zoom, that H2. The one that I waved at you um, is this H6. It's fancy. It's got all sorts of different uh, microphones on it. Shows your levels and that, but costs about £300. Um, it's, you can do more with it. But at the end of the day, a recording is a recording. Um, there is a lot more to fiddle with on here. Um, and if you're not into buttons and twiddling dials and stuff, stay away from this one. If you are, though, it's great. It's really good. 
So um, as I say, the H2N is the one I would probably use. If you forget any of these things or you would like to have a trial of one of them, just get in touch and you can have a go. Um, but, um, but for now, that's, uh, that's, that's what I use. So we've got some kit um, and we've got, I'm going to stop sharing now. Um, we've got some kit for how to record it and it will record onto a CD, onto an SD card. But even then, before I do any of that, um, there's, there's a couple of important things to do. So I'm getting ready. I've got my kit set up, but I'm about to record my interview. And so I'll run through what I normally do. So a couple of months ago, um, I recorded an interview with um, uh, Sarah Rowland Jones, um, the, dean, the Dean of St. David's, anyway. And um, I wanted to ask her about, you know, um, about a couple of things. We're, um, we're, we're, you and the CEO of Planet had set it up and um, we thought it would be a very interesting uh very interesting podcast a bit of a coup really the St Dean of St David's um what I did with her which I do with anyone is I'll send an email introducing myself and talking about uh what I've done and a little bit of information just just about me um I also send a link to our podcast web page so that she can here or whoever I'm going to be doing the interview with can hear the style um, that I'm not sort of shouting or doing anything horrendous or that there are adverts in the middle of it. And then the other thing, most importantly, is I'll send a bullet point of questions of the things I'm going to cover. Um, and so I'll say, and it's usually the questions will be, I'll have about five or six, no more than that. Um, remember, it's a half hour um, episode. I, I don't want people to feel intimidated. And this email is the start of put, trying to put people at their ease. So I'll say, um, these are the things I'm going to ask you about. If there's something on there you don't want to talk about, absolutely fine. If there's something that um, isn't on there that you would like to raise, that's also fine, just let me know. Um, and then finally, I'll say, and this is particularly for when I'm doing a, an interview over Zoom or the, or the um, telephone, uh, mobile phone, um, I'll say I won't be recording as soon as you pick up um, again, so that they're not thinking, they're not on a back foot as soon as they say hello. Um, <clears throat> and just say, look, I will tell you when I'm going to start recording. And so um, I sent this off to, um, to, Sarah and um, uh, she came back say yes we arranged a time we actually decided to record over zoom uh, which I'd never done before but now that I've done it um, is really uh, I've, I've, that's the one I prefer actually so what I do is I take the um, I take the bullet points that I give that I gave her in the email and I'll put them on a piece of paper, print them out on a piece of paper, print it in landscape with very big writing and also bits that I know I'll forget. Like she's the very Reverend Dr. Sarah Rowland Jones, Lieutenant of the Victorian Order, Order of the British Empire. And, and that's the bit I'll forget. So I'll put it all there and other little pieces and I leave big gaps in between the bullet points. So these are the ones that I said and notice they're nice open questions. What is the role of a cathedral? Easy to ask, probably quite hard to, to answer, but I, it's the sort of question that isn't going to be, it's a big church, it's this, it's that. It means that knowing her and her role in it, it's going to be something that's going to elicit quite a lot of talking. Um, and it's interesting. Um, what does the dean of a cathedral do? Nice and Nice and easy one to ask, but just, better than tell me about your day. Um, so I just, there, and thinking of those questions first beforehand is crucial. Um, first of all, it means that they don't get any surprises, but it also means that you've got an idea of how the podcast is gonna go, how the interview is gonna go. And the reason why I then print it out and have it there is that while I'm doing the podcast, I'll make notes um, because 
I'm recording, I'm thinking about so many other things. So I can put things in that I know I'll forget. Um, but I can also, as um, the person's talking to you, I'll write in here little things. So for something she was talking about, um, the garden, the little cottage garden or something that they were going to, that they'd started. So I think, oh, right, I'll come back to that. So I make the little notes there. Um, because again, when I'm actually in it, and I don't normally get nervous with these things. There is a little bit of nerves, but I don't really get nervous. But I know I'm concentrating so much on making sure it records, keeping the conversation flowing, everything else, um, that I don't want to then say, oh, you said something really interesting at the beginning. What was it? Um, in that that just, it, it would just like, cause the conversation to sort of grind a halt a little bit. And it also sounds like you're not really listening. Um, so if I make a note there, and then we get down to it here, and I can say other new things that you started with, um, I can come back and say, tell me about the garden, actually, you mentioned right back at the beginning. And it's just nice and easy. It's just a little trick, but it's helped me out a lot of times. The other thing that I use it for, again, because you're trying to focus on keeping the conversation going, there are times when you kind of dry up yourself. And you think, oh, God, what, what was I going to say? What was I going to do? And you can just glance down. I've got it nice, big writing. Um, glance down, I think, ah, right, yes, I'll, I'll talk about that one. Um, I say to the people that I... Um, uh, that I'm interviewing, don't write notes, don't write a script, um, because you can hear it. You can just hear when someone's reading off a piece of paper. Um, you can say, I, I say, look, don't worry, I'm, I'll ask the question, I'll keep the conversation grow going, that's my job. Um, you can, um, you just relax and just answer the questions and we'll just, we'll just chat. Um, I also say to them at the beginning, um, I'm uh, I, I can, I will edit this afterwards so that if you, um, you dry up or you change anything, oh no, could I do that one again? Could I change that? I said, absolutely. Don't, don't worry about it. We can talk. Um, and then if you want two, three goes at answering and answering something, we can do that. And I'll edit out, cut out the bits um, that you didn't want. Um, and it'll just smoothly go through. Um, and so usually, so what happened actually with, with Dean Sarah was we had the Zoom thing set up just like this. And um, I had the, um, this Zoom recorder connected to the computer um, and also had a microphone out so that I was speaking into the microphone. Dean Sarah was being recorded also on this. So the microphone, my microphone and Dean Sarah's audio from the computer was being recorded on this. So I ended up with two tracks. Um, but so I had all that set up and it was going, but the first thing that I did was just have a little chat, have a little chat with her, even if it's just inconsequential stuff about setting up or, you know, oh, we have to do this and I'm going to do that. And I'm, you know, is it all right? How are you doing? Are the questions that I sent okay? And just a little chat. And then they get people talking back. Um, and then I say, well, actually, you know, the podcast is going to be like this, just us having a chat. Um, that's what I want to do. Um, and just, again, just try to make it feel like we're, we're at, with, um, nice and easy, just a conversation. Because it is surprising, even the best speakers get nervous um, when I'm interviewing them. As soon as you think, right, record is on, they, they tighten up a bit and you can hear it in the voice. Then I'll usually say, right, I'm pressing record now and I make a bit of joke about it. And, um, and I'll say I'm doing that so I don't forget to press record at the end of it, which is actually true. Because um, that's my major worry. That's the bit I get nervous about, is that I do that, I get somebody like, um, well, the Dinas and Davids, and then we get to half, <laughs> halfway through and I realise I haven't pressed record. Um, so I'm very careful. I'd say to them, I'm pressing record. I'm telling you I'm pressing record because I want to make sure I've pressed record. Um, 
and then we talk and even then i press record i still don't start the the interview we're still talking saying right it's recording are you okay we've got a glass of water or something again keeping somebody at their ease that's the crucial bit so they know what i'm going to ask they know the setup um they know that um no one else is going to burst in i'm not going to do anything um strange and then i'll say right well i'll make a start and then i give myself a gap let's say hello right here's the next episode of the planet pod and i'll do something a little introduction and then say hello to them um i'll always leave a gap because that makes it easy again in editing so all the way along um i've been the, the whole point of it is trying to get the person at their ease trying to get them nice and friendly so that they're going to loosen up and just talk um, that's the bottom line that's the bit that takes is, is quite tricky but uh, but it's the it's the it's it's the way that actually um works for me um now i said i said right at the beginning about doing this without spending a lot of money having one of those little recorders those h2n things um makes it very easy it, editing is very easy with that um but you don't have to your organization might not have 150 quid to to throw around just for something that you might not actually think oh well i don't know if we want to do this i just want to try it um but um it's something that if you do think you're going to do those recorders help an awful lot now prior to recording with dean sarah i recorded during lockdown with the one of those recorders connected to my mobile phone and um, also a microphone connected to me so i spoke answered my quest uh, asked my questions and then over the mobile phone i got the answer coming in on there as well that worked fine um, for some people again it was just like um, a phone conversation people were really at their ease as far as that's concerned um, but mobile signals can be patchy um, and it and it I mean the thing is it's not great quality audio but if you listen to the news and you hear uh, somebody who's phoning in you you can tell or or the radio you can tell that somebody's on the phone and it's not a problem you just know they're on the phone I usually mention that um, I would say I'm talking to Dean Sarah on Zoom, uh, such and such, and which might think, oh, that's why she sounds like a Dalek. Um, she didn't, but you might just sort of think that's why it sounds a little bit strange. Um, but it, it's not a big deal. Um, there is, though, um, and I would have shown you, but we're actually doing it for something else, is that you can record your Zoom conversation. Um, and if you record a Zoom conversation, all you need, need is a Zoom account. And if it's a one-to-one -one thing, then, right. you know, okay, if it cuts you off, it's going to be cutting you off at about 40 minutes, which is ample time. Um, so if you wanted to record a podcast, record an interview with somebody, you could just have a Zoom call with them and record it. And that's what I'm going, and then edit the uh, the recording afterwards and that's what i'm going to show you how to do today um but that means oh reese there's a hand up yeah um apologies um about the recording via um zoom um isn't usually i find the 40 minute um limit only uh, works when you have more than uh one person um on chat i yeah and that's that there are limitations and you're quite right it's mm. and and the other problem with that as well is that if it decides because it, it it there are sometimes it lets you talk for ages but then other times it just cuts you off and there is no warning or very little warning and you don't want that to happen um when you're actually in your um when you're in your uh, interview or something um Recording via Zoom will work. It'll um, and a, a non-paid Zoom account. It will work, and it is the cheap way of doing it. It is not the best way, but it means that you don't have to pay any money. If you can, I would recommend getting one of the recorders. 
um, that 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 works best. As far as um, now, the, something that I found that I didn't realize um, one of the benefits of using Zoom is that when I'm when I'm recording an interview with somebody, um, I can't help it. If I'm recording an interview with somebody, particularly on the phone where I can't see them, they're talking about things. But me, when I listen to my track, my track is all, mm -hmm, aha, uh -huh. oh, very interesting, mm, yeah, mm. and there's all me doing my thing. But that's just my sort of response to say, yeah, keep talking, it's interesting. Um, and it can be really irritating. Now, you can edit yourself out um, if you're on two different tracks. But the nice thing about doing an interview on Zoom is that you can give those cues that you are listening um, by your body language. Um, and particularly when it's just two, two screens, just two people on, on screen at the same time, um, you can see because you can nod like that and you know all these sort of expressions and do that sort of stuff so that they know that you're actually um, engaging with them. And then it sounds like they're chatting um, because you're, you're giving them some sort of feedback. Um, and that was something that I hadn't realized. Um, and that, that was one of the benefits of it um, was just doing that, just to keep them, keep the conversation flowing, keep it going. Um, ideally, and hopefully we will be able to do this, um, you know, as, as, uh, as the months progress, or the weeks progress, hopefully, is that um, I prefer to record on one of these things out, um, in situ, face to face. You can, I mean, I've got leads that link to the to the microphone um, so that you can do it socially distanced. Um, so, for example, when I was doing um, the interview with Tia Coyd yesterday, um, we actually went into the woods. Um, and they were talking about their woods, woodmanship and things like that. And it was lovely because you could hear the birds, there were dogs running around, there was things like that. But I can do it face to face. It's much, much easier because, yes, you've got the whole body language and you, you can just chat. It just feels a lot more natural. One of the first, um, one of the first interviews that I did um, was with uh, Stella Hooper from Halford West Town Council. Um, and this was... Um, it was either at the end of 2019 or early 2020 um, because we decided to do it in the cafe of the new library in Hufford West. Um, and it, that was nice in that I set up, but we had little microphones either side, we had cups of coffee and you could hear the cafe going on around, uh, around, around us. And it just gives it a little bit of context in that we were in Hufford West. You can hear Hufford West going around. You could unfortunately hear there was a young a, a, a young girl had an absolute meltdown halfway through, as kids do in cafes. Um, but that was part of it. Um, and the nice thing about using uh, microphones such as this is you can direct it at the person, um, and it only it mainly picks up um, what that person's saying rather than the the background. But it was in a cafe, and kids do. <laughs> Do have tantrums and that was part of it and it didn't interrupt the, the interview i think it added to it in a way in that it just felt like the person listening to the podcast was like the third person at the table you could hear the coffee cups i was talking stella was talking and you were just listening in um and so that that's how i like it like it to be talking to jesse and maria though um, because I said you, they could borrow some of these. Now, it depends on the people you're going to be talking to. If you've got people in your organisation, let's say, for example, who might, you might want to hear their stories. I'm thinking of organisations such as Solver Care or Men's Sheds, um, where you want to hear what they want to say, their, their experiences, you know, what, what they might not like having a microphone pointed at them. Um, that's going to make you feel a bit unnerved, even though you have it a little way away. It's still looking at you um, and and you're conscious of it. Um, so that other little recorder is nice in that you can put it in the middle of the table. Um, it's about the size of a box of cooks matches. Um, you plunk it in there and you can very soon forget about it. Um, and people could be chatting who might not 
it might not relax as much um, if they didn't, uh, if, 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 it, if you were making a big thing about it. So what we've done is we've started, um, I've talked about what a podcast is, uh, what I, um, how I view them, um, different styles. Are you going to have people talking or is it going to be just you? Um, and then a little bit about kit um, and then arranging the interview, send them an email, put in the questions, what the things that you're going to cover, but then copy and paste that out into a big sheet of crib sheet for you, for you so that you can use that during the actual interview itself. And then when you're in the interview itself, it's just all about putting the person at their ease um, and just making it so that the conversation actually flows. Some people are easier than others. And there'll be some times and, and some, some interviews are just hard work because the, the other person just clams up. And you have to really force it and keep it going without sounding forced. Um, and that's just, that's just how it is. Um, different people respond in different ways. Um, but at the end of the day is making it interesting and making it approachable so that somebody, anyone could just listen to it and get something from it. Now, I've been talking for um, like 50, uh, near, nearly um, <laughs> 55 minutes. Um, so should we take a little break and then I'll come back and I'll talk to you about editing. And that's where the pain starts. <laughs> Are there any questions though before we, we, we take a little break? And the only one I was going to ask was about the different types of microphones. Um, you were saying about the fact that you'd have, yes. well, what, what I assume would be condenser mics or dynamic mics. Um, but when with, with, with the USB mics that you might use on your phone or on a laptop or something, are there different, are there directional ones there that you could get? There are. Um, there's one, there's one here that I'm not actually using. Now, this is a, like a podcasting mic. This is quite a posh one. Um, and that's a USB mic. Um, it's called a Yeti, a Yeti Blue. Um, they're, they're, um, this is Planet's, it's not mine. Um, and it's a very good quality. It, it looks like one of these old 1950s style things. And yes, you can get um, the sort of spit guards at the front um, and you can, you can spend a lot of money on this. And to be honest with you, with two hours, I could spend, you could spend so much time talking about the sort of audio dynamics and all this sort of stuff. Generally though, the microphone, well, I'm not using a microphone for this. And it's good enough. Um, and it's uh, it's and this is just my my MacBook, um, and it's the microphone that's built in um, that I'm using to 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 talk to you now. And um, you know, however you're talking back to me, it's it's good. Um, the the technology is is much better um, as far as that's concerned. I have used particularly with the video stuff um, lapel mics um either wired ones or wireless ones um and that means that the person on on that respect the person really does forget they're wearing it um and you just sit down and you just chat um sometimes they can forget a bit too easily that they're wearing it and say all sorts of things um but you've got to be careful with, with those ones but they work really nicely as well and you can get some pretty decent um lapel mics or lavaliers uh, um, mics or lavaliers I don't know how you pronounce it um, for your phone um, and they they cost about 10 pounds or something they're not expensive um, and you could do that the trouble is they're wired and at the end of the interview if you both get up and walk away somebody's either going to have a broken phone or the other one's going to be strangled or both um, so just remember that you're all wired up again these are all things I've done well, no, I've never strangled anyone, but it's it's all the you know things that I've yeah, it happens yeah. Okay, should we um should we come back at five past? Would that be okay? Yep. Enough time to make a cup of tea, and then we'll do editing. Okay. Yeah. There we are. Okay. See you in a bit.
Hello, hiya. Hiya, John. Hi, guys. Hello. Hi, Rosie. Yes, it's very good, John, very good. Is it? It's hard to know how to pitch it, whether to tell you. When you're asking, I mean, that, that thing about the microphones, you could spend, out of mind, that would be interminable. I think if, if I did two hours on microphones, and more than I would know, to be honest. Well, I, everyone would drop off to sleep, I'm sure. <laughs> I think so, <laughs> yeah. I know. Yeah. It, uh, the, only th the only thing I used to find, um, not that I know an awful lot about it, but um, in the old days, before digital, um, we would um, do some recording stuff. Um, and when the digital stuff came in, uh, with USBs particularly, I found you could only use one microphone um, on most laptops and computers. You got yourself into a hell of a mess otherwise. And that, and that's the beauty of these things is that and mm. it allows you to have more than one input. It's it's like a very mini mixing desk, um, mm. the same thing, so that you can have different things come in um, at the same time. It is possible to do it with one microphone, it, but um, it just makes life so much harder. I'm sure. Um, yeah, uh, the, I I. Look, I'll admit, I, I, I'm, I'm a geek. I do, I do like, I do like my gadgets, and I do like those those things. Um, and they're um, they're great for, um, for for just getting the the audio just right. The other thing that's really good about them is that, um, and I always feel a bit um, strange because I did it actually in the in the in the wood yesterday. Is that I'll wear headphones. Because again, I'm ultra paranoid that um, what people are saying doesn't get picked up mm -hmm. so that I can put microphone, uh, headphones into that so that I can hear that it's actually coming in there and it's, it's recording. Um, but Does it take um, digital as well as analog then in that gizmo, the H2? Yes, it does. Um, it and does, that was, all right. Yeah, it does right. because um, what I can do with that is that it's got some microphones on the top, the little grills, um, but also at the side, um, it's got a little line in that you can plug directly. And I use, oh, I use a cable like this, if I put it against, with two, just two stereo, three and a All half right. jacks. And I put one into my computer, the headphone out, and the other one into the recorder. Right. And it just records. So, um, you know, that, that and like also I, I could use this on my phone. If you're using it with an iPhone, you can get an extra little bit that fits into the iPhone, the iPhone bit. But, um, you know, yeah, it works. Um, and that th these things, they, they don't cost much at all, but it, uh, it allows you to connect it in. Um, but as you see, we'll see about um, We'll, I'll show you. No, no, no. We're we're, we're not. Um, <laughs> we haven't started. Um, it, I was rambling, but um, yeah, you can have both digital and the analog going in. It's um, they're great. They're great little things, um, and I do I do like using them. And I would recommend. And if you want any ideas on using them, actually, I'll, I'll do a little plug for myself here as well. In that, if you want to go um, now this is going to be two hours today and an hour next week if after this you think right I want to record one and I'd like someone to be around while I do it um, we can arrange for you to come you could come to Planet or you know or even me come out to you and we just go through the stages because at the end that's when it starts turning into my project Datris because I I give IT support basically uh, for projects around the county um, it's a lottery funded project so you know I um, it, and, and also the lottery really like it when you work with other organizations as well right. Inter yeah um, I was just saying on that point as well um, the lottery and I'm sure all the other funders love a bit of publicity um, and if you've got your podcast I don't know the men's shed podcast the solve the care podcast or whatever and you can say oh and here we are because um, they can then promote it. I know um, it was nice because when I had my um, sort of uh, end of third year report to send off to Chris Baker, 
Um, and he was saying, oh, well, you know, have you managed to carry on in lockdown? They say, yes, and here is the result. <laughs> There's the proof um, that it's actually there. So, um, you know, it was just having the podcast going. And it just meant I was just still talking to communities, um, still doing stuff. But um, I, I, there was one, actually, for the, for, for the solver folk there. there was, I did a really interesting face-to-face -face one with Raoul Speak. He mm -hmm. can talk <laughs> as well, <laughs> and um, he was, and he, but with him, I actually took the microphones down. Um, I sat in his little bit by the side of his gallery, and he made me a coffee. Um, and then, pretty much, I just said hello, Raoul, and then the rest of it was <laughs> him just going on. And it was, it was the opposite. I had to like rein him in at times <laughs> to keep onto the points. Um, but he was easy, uh, really easy. Um, to just get one. It's the ones where you just get a few words um, coming back that it's uh, it, it mm. gets difficult. But that's what makes it interesting. Mm. So um, um, now that you've had um, a couple of minutes to um, to sort of digest all that, is there anything else that's come up uh, from from what I did in the previous hour that you think? Oh, I need to know that. No. If there is, um, just get in touch. Even if you got in touch with Jesse and um, Jesse and Maria, and they and they they can raise it with me. Alternatively, if over the week um, you think, ah, oh, right, there's that, and I'm sure, and this is why. Now I've jokingly called it homework. It's not homework, but for me, um, just learning about these things. It's not until you try it um, that you actually then all the things come up, and you think, oh, right didn't work um can't do this um it sounded all very nice and easy when you gave the presentation but when you actually come to do it it's um you, it, you think and you fall at the first hurdle and I, that tends to be the thing in it and a lot of people i find when you do that they'll blame themselves and say oh i'm rubbish at computers or something and it's not it's just because it's just not been designed very well right so are you ready editing I, um, for my audio editing, um, I use um, Adobe Audition. Um, and I use that because um, in Planet, as part of the, the job that I'm doing, because I do a lot of video uh, editing and, and stuff like that, we um, subscribe to Creative Cloud. And Creative Cloud, and we subscribe to the full thing because we use Photoshop and Illustrator and InDesign and all that sort of stuff. And you get all of these extra things and Audition came with it. And you pay so much for the subscription. I thought, well, I'm darn well going to use it um, because it's there. <laughs> I want my money's worth out of this Adobe. If you have Audition, if you do have Adobe Creative Cloud, Audition is great. It works really well and it's got and it's actually set up and it has little how to videos on how to do your podcasts and stuff. That's what I actually use, but it's not cheap. Um, I would only say get it if um, if you've already got Creative Cloud, I, I wouldn't or access to Creative Cloud. Um, I, I wouldn't. It's not worth getting just for that. If you have. Um, and so I'm not going to focus on Adobe or Audition. If any of you do have Creative Cloud and you want um, a session on how to use Audition, I can do that as a separate thing um, after, after these. Um, but because um, it is one of the things like anything to do with the Adobe software, it's, it's brilliant when you know how to use it, but it's got a steep learning curve. Once you're over that hump, though, it just works and it's great. Um, I'm going to use instead, um, and actually this is the software that Brenda Dane said she used, um, uh, a piece of free software called Audacity. Um, has anyone heard, have you heard of Audacity before? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, I know it's used in schools quite a bit. Um, uh, it's got two main advantages. One of them is it is powerful and it will do anything that you want for the actual um, uh, the, the project in it uh, for, for editing the audio. Um, the other benefit is that it is free, legally free. It is public domain software. Um, and so for actually doing this, this little bit of it, um, I'm going to show you Audacity. 
it's very similar to audition in a lot of ways, but um, but it has it's quirky. Um, so I'm, I know a few people have, have said that they've, they've used it before. Um, I'm going to assume you know nothing, though. I'm going to go back. I'm just going to say because um, I use I use it very little as well. So I'm I'm not going to go in depth into every little part of audition uh, audacity, um, but I'm going to go through how to get it, how to download it, how to set it up. Um, but uh, but but uh, have a look. So I'm going to start sharing my screen again, and we will go back to. Here we are. All right. So that's the little podcast thing. So to actually get it, you go um, just type Audacity into Google um, and you get this thing, audacityteam.org, um, free open source, cross-platform. It'll work on anything. Um, now I'm running this on a Mac um, and you just download it, install it, and it works. Um, and it looks... Um, like this when you've got it set up. Let me see if I can get it on the screen. So you load it up. That's what it looks like. It's got lots of little buttons and things on the top. It looks a bit scary, but it's not that bad. It's nice and straightforward when you get, get the hang of it. Um, but you can, it's picked up that I'm using my MacBook Pro microphone. I could choose something else. So Zoom audio device, I could choose that. That means I'd be using it for mixing in. Or if I had the Yeti connect, connected up, it would connect, it would find that and you could choose which one you wanted. And what do you want to listen to it on the output just on your speaker. So I'm just listening to it on the laptop, laptop microphone, laptop speakers. That's how it's going to go. Um, I'm not going to use an awful lot of the um, uh, of the features of this. I'm just focusing on um, record, editing your podcast. Now, I'm not trying to be flippant here. You can make things really easy um, by simply not making any mistakes. <laughs> if you record your interview and it just goes from beginning to end, then you don't need to edit it. Um, so you could do that. I've never managed that. Um, but the, the, the least amount of editing that you have to put yourself through, the better. Um, but let's say you're strapped for cash. You just want to do this um, via Zoom. Let's get just joining in again. I think the, um, uh, the connection had dropped. Hello. <laughs> Um, so let's say you're, you're strapped for cash and you don't want to be spending an awful lot. Um, you, um, uh, you, you can use your free Zoom account with the proviso, as Shree mentioned as well, you can get cut off. Timing is an issue if you're, not, if you're using the free account on that. Um, and you're going to use Audacity for editing your, um, your, whatever you've recorded. Um, now, I would like to show you here, but we're already recording. Um, Maria's recording this. But if you go down to record at the bottom, um, you can have your interview. You can say, right, you can do your little chat first of all, say, we're going to cover this, we'll talk about that. And then um, I'm going to press uh, record now. Um, is that okay? Um, I, I'm, I'm telling you that I'm pressing record, so I remember I pressed record, and I laugh, they laugh, and we all get back, um, and it's all really nice and easy. So I press record, then I'll say, hello, and welcome to John's podcast. I'm talking to, do, 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 do. Um, and so that, and then that gets all recorded, and then at the end of the Zoom um, session, when I end the session, then it says, right, I'm recording it. The first thing that uh, the, the first time I ever did this, it says I, I'm going to record it. And I was so stressed about saving the recording. I just went, yes, OK. And then, of course, it saves it somewhere. You don't know where it saved it. So take a couple of minutes just to look at. I'm going to save this recording and I'm saving it here. And you can say, oh, no, no, no. Save it such and such a place. Because the rest of the time, well, what I normally do if that happens is that I'll do another very quick Zoom recording and see where that gets saved. 
and then I can usually find that's where the first one's gone saved. And it's those sort of things that um, they're the bits that trip you up. Um, and you're so focusing on the interview itself that if you can't find it, um, and that can take you half a day of absolute misery and despair, just trying to find the thing. Anyway, so you've got it saved and you've got it, um, you've got it ready to go. I'm going to show you, so um, I'm going to give you a sneak peek into next, next week. So what happens afterwards when you, um, so you've, you've done your recording and then you have to upload it. Where does it go? That's next week's. But um, the platform I use called Libsyn, um, you put all of the different recordings on there. So here we are, the Dean of St. David's Cathedral, and I can... Bit of cheesy music. Radio Planning, the Planning Podcast. Hello, I'm talking to the very Reverend Dr. C so there we are. That's the interview. So it's going in nice and sort of easy. We've chatted a little bit beforehand um, and then the, the, the conversation starts and I follow those questions that I that I put to her. There's also you can when you get it, there are notes to go along with it so that if you want to put links to the various things that you talk about, that can be useful. Um, and the other thing that I do on all of them is that I say I put that it's fund supported by the National Lottery Community Fund um, on all of the podcasts. So again, just to keep the funder happy and I can say, yes, I'm actually doing some work and I'm, I'm putting it out there. So we've got, down, we've got Audacity downloaded. Um, I've had my, um, I, I've done my um, interview with the Dean of St. David and then I've stopped uh, recording and the the recording is actually downloaded onto my computer. This is where the fun starts. Now I've actually had a go at doing this um, so I'm going to share the screen with Audacity and I'm going to go now please um, this is one of these things that I won't see your chat when I'm doing share screen so shout out if you um, if it hurts. <laughs> so I'm going to go and do Audacity um, here we are. So you get this screen coming open. And then what I tend to do now is I'll go to file and I'll import audio. And I'm going to go into, um, let's go onto my desktop and I'll choose the recordings that I did before um, to start off with. So I've got two uh, folders, one called me.wav another one called sarah.wav. So I'm going to import both of them. There it is, importing them. That's me. That's Sarah. Now, I, would, I recorded myself using a microphone and it's recorded it in mono. Sarah is recorded in stereo because I used one of those cables. Um, but it, that's why there's one track for me and two for Sarah. Um, but it's just because one's in mono, one's in, st in stereo. I'm going to, at the end of it, save it all in mono. And I'll talk about why next week. Um, but if I go right back to the beginning, so this is the original, this is the raw track um, so we're, uh, I'm using one of these, I don't know if you're, uh, it's called a, it's a Zoom recorder, um, and I can... So that's me just doing a bit of flannel, just chatting, trying to say all these, uh, you know, trying to be friendly. Um, and so Hello. I'm... So if I go back, so then, so we do... Called a, it's a Zoom recorder. Come on, come on. Um, and I can put microphones into it and all sorts of things. It's great. And it records great. it onto um, an SD card. Um, but uh, here we go. Hello, I'm talking to the very Reverend Dr. Sarah Rowland Jones, Lieutenant of the Victorian Order, or, um, Order of the British Empire, and Dean of St. David's Cathedral. Dean Sarah, thanks very much for taking time. 
It's lovely to be with you. Um, is it all right if I call you Dean Sarah during this? Yeah, that's my father's <laughs> Right, so it's all very nice and chatty and very easy. But can you see, as the thing's moving across, you can see where the words are and you can see where the gaps are and this sort of bit that looks very complicated is actually helpful because you can see the flirt you can see me asking a question and it's quiet with, with Sarah um, and then she answers then I ask another question those gaps are really handy you can also zoom in so if I zoom in to this bit here um, right to the beginning. So that's me talking and then I leave a little gap and then I say welcome to the podcast. I don't want this bit at the beginning. I want to get rid of that. And so um, if I use this, so th there's, there's three, there's four basic buttons which I use in, in um, Audacity. One of them is this one that I'll call an I bar. It looks like a capital I capital letter I, um, and then there's the, the zoom button, the magnifying glass. There's this one, there's a time shift, which is an, two arrows pointing away from each other, and then cut the pair of scissors. They're pretty much all I use um, to, to tidy up the, 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 um, tidy up the uh, audio. So I'm using this eye bar. And I'm going to, so let me just check again. To um, an SD card. Um, but uh, here we go. So there's my gap is just there. I know where it's going to be. So um, I'm going to highlight all of that. And then if I cut it, so now if I play. Hello, I'm talking to the very reverend Dr. Sarah Roland jones So it starts right at the beginning. I've got rid of all the sort of flannel and all that sort of chit chat and it's nice and easy. Now, you know when I was saying before as well, on mine, so when Sarah's talking here, I've, the, the, all these tiny little bits, that's me going, mm -hmm, uh -huh, all my chair creaking. Um, you can get rid of them as well. So again, using my eye bar, I can highlight that bit, all of that. So when Sarah's talking, I want silence from me. And so if I go to, uh, now the trouble is you can't see the menu at the top. If I go to generate and silence, okay, there you are. See, it's chopped it all away so that if I'm talking, you don't, if, if Sarah's talking, you don't hear anything from me. Um, and so it just focuses on her. Just tiny little bits um, that just make it, because although you think, well, I can live with you saying yep every now and again, um, but it's after about 20 minutes into a podcast, it gets really grating and really irritating. Um, so the fact that you can just chop them away is really handy. Um, the other thing is as well, now it's pretty clean, the audio coming back from, from Sarah, but sometimes if you're on um, a, uh, a, a telephone, a mobile phone call or a glitchy Zoom call, you will pick up all little spurious noises as well. So you might want to, in the bits where I'm talking, I can go generate silence, okay, and chop that away. I've only highlighted the silence in that track, so I've kept. So when I talk, Sarah's silent. When she, she talks, I'm silent. And it just makes it a lot more clean. It's easy to do, but if you've got a half hour ed editing, you've got to go through all the thing um, and just, just, just do it. It's painstaking, it takes ages. Um, and I tell you that I, I spent, pretty much the bulk of the rest of this morning and a bit of the early afternoon, editing the audio that I recorded at um, Tia um in the, in the thing yesterday. Um, mainly because, I mean, it was lovely hearing the bird song, but two of them had brought dogs and they were chasing each other and all over the place. And of course, then while I was, while I was talking or someone else was talking, you move your feet and it, the place is really crunchy leaves underneath. And so there's lots of sort of things. So I had to go through the whole thing and just whoever wasn't talking, cut them out um, so that you just hear the voices themselves. 
Um, but that was, so that's, um, that's that track to start off with. But one thing I haven't got is the cheesy music at the beginning. And of course, the cheesy music is, uh, it's one of these things, I'm, 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 I mean, uh, I, I'm undecided with it. I'd, it's good to give your, um, uh, your podcast an identity. And it's just a little, they all start off with the same, the same bit of music. So that as soon as you start off, you know, yep, that's it. It's the Planet Podcast. It starts off, do 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 um, And some, I've got somebody else in the office to record over the top of it. And I mix them together exactly the same as this. I recorded them talking and had the music underneath, mixed it together. Um, and they recorded it, said it in English and Welsh. Um, and then um, and then I use that. I saved that little snippet and I use it for all of my all of my podcasts to do with Planet. I've recently started doing a podcast with Pembrokeshire Leisure. So it's called the Pembrokeshire Wellbeing Podcast podcast. Um, and so I had somebody else. So it's me saying the Pembrokeshire Wellbeing Podcast. And then Sophie at work says Podledi Atles Chibembro. Um, and we have another bit of music underneath, but we use that little ident for all of them um, there. Um, Reese, yes. Um, so these two separate um, regions, they are um, the results. They're both then, um, recordings from the, the same interview um, yes. separated by using the, um, uh, which device did you use again? The Zoom. The Zoom. H, that, that Zoom H2N would do it. Um, that's the trouble, because we're talking about Zoom and Zoom, and it's two different Zooms. So Yeah, I, I know what you mean. Yeah. yeah. So, so, yeah, so they're two separate, because, yes. you know, so you yeah. can separate um, yeah. vo um, voices using yeah. the Zoom H2N. Yes, you can. And then, and so the next bit I'm going to show you is how to get the music in, because you're going to get... A third line coming in as well um, now this is the bit there's a there's a health warning with this one um, it will drive you nuts um, so I'm going to go back onto the internet now if you set up a library um, a, U a Google account you go into YouTube and then if you go then into YouTube studio down at the side there is a thing at the bottom called the audio library and they have copyright free music <laughs> um, sounds uh, for you to use. Now, there's all sorts of different ones. There's, there's just a whole, a whole load. Of, I'm going to, um, uh, so uh, the, the thing to bear in mind, can you see it says license type, there's Creative Commons, um, or there's also this one that looks like YouTube. If you choose the one that has like the little go button on it, um, you don't have to, you can just use it. Um, it's copyright free. You can, you can have it there. Creative Commons, you can still use it, but you've got to attribute the, um, the, the, the author. Uh, you've got to say, yeah, this was done by um, Twin Musicom um, and put in all the, their sort of links and things in. And just to keep it simple, I just stick to the, um, to the YouTube audio li library license. And so, you will get things like all of these different ones. There's loads of them. There's, you might not want that one for solver care, but, um, but it could be, you know, although you might want to change the sort of feeling of it, but um, there's, uh, there's loads of them. Um, I have arranged this with by duration, so I've got the short ones because I know I'm not going to. There are thousands in here, um, and so you can go through all of these different little clips that someone else has got um, and use them for your um, for your uh, for your for your little sort of sting at the beginning, your intro. So let's say, for example, I've got Dance on de Passion, um, and I'll download that one. It's nice. It's not very. Um, so it, it, it's not very controversial, it's a nice easy one, and it's one that will just think, oh yeah, I recognise that. So, I've downloaded it. I'm going to go into Audacity. Here are my two tracks. I'm going to import another, so file, import, 
audio. And I downloaded it earlier, just like every good Blue Peter person. So there it is. Open that. And it's there is begin. Now, it looks like nothing's there, but that's because we're zoomed out. So if I zoom in and go right back to the beginning, here we go. Let's zoom in more. Zoom in more. Right back to the beginning. Zoom in a bit more even. Here we are. So there we are. That's the music. That's also in stereo. Um, so I've got me talking, Sarah talking, and then the uh, the talk. Now, actually, I already have a bit of a gap here, but let's just say there wasn't much of a gap. In fact, I'm going to chop away a bit, bit more. So I'm going to choose on here. So it's a nice clean start. Cut that. There we are. And it, there we go. Now, if I play that now, I'm going to be talking over the top of the music. And I don't want that unless I was recording that bit saying pod lady and planet, the planet podcast. Um, so I'm going to use this other one, the time shift tool, this one with the two arrows. And if I've got that one, I can move this slightly. And this is where actually being able to see where the sounds are is handy because now I can see that that ends there and then I can start talking. Make sure that you move you and your interviewee at the same time so that you don't go out of sync. Um, but now if I play this. Hello, I'm talking to the... And that's how you do it. You just put in one of these little things. It's cheesy, but it makes you laugh. And I also choose one and I put it right at the end um, so that it just sort of brackets the two of them. Um, and if you have the same piece of music for each one, it just makes it's another episode of the, the podcast series. That's all you need to do, really, with if you've got if you're using one of these um, uh, Zoom devices, um, the, the, the actual hardware devices, because it, as Fries was asking, it splits the interviewer and interviewee into separate tracks already. And it makes life really easy because um, you can chop the bits out. You can silence the bits where the other one's not talking. Um, and you can um, you can also, I find, if I... Um, if, if I make a mistake or something, it's easy for me to chop my little bit out so that I sound really smooth and professional. Um, and then the other person could just sort of talk. Um, but you don't have to do it that way. That's the bit where you actually need to buy a bit of kit. But that's why I would recommend getting the kit because it, it, does, it does make life easy. Um, putting the music in. Um, that would always appear as another track. And that's where you need something like Audacity or, or, or Audition to mix these different things together. Um, and then when you've done it, you just go to File. Now, you can't, I, I've realised you can't actually see these drop downs. If I go to File and Export, Export as MP3, and it'll just say save and I'll call it, I don't know, um, St. David's and then make sure I know where it's going to go. Leave these settings as they are and just save and it will make the MP3 for you. And that MP3, that is the audio file. Oh, and the other thing that I want to do is force it to mono. Make sure it's a mono thing so that I'm not having stereo. Um, so I'm just going to save it. I'll go over this again at the beginning of next week. Um, so I've got it saved. I'll have an, one MP3 file, which is the music, me and Sarah. <laughs> it sounds like the start of a, of a film, a black and white movie. Me, me the music and Sarah, um, all mixed together into one mono track, which I, I can then. Now, if you wanted to, if you didn't want to do that, this is the bit where I'm saying, if you don't want to do a podcast, if you just want to do a one off um, interview and you want to stick it onto Facebook or stick it onto um, your website, then you just click on save and make a link to it. 
on your upload it to your website, upload it to Facebook, whatever, do it that way. Then you don't need to mess around with podcasts or something because there isn't going to be an episode two, three, four, five. But once you get the bug, there probably will be. It's it's actually fun and you get, and it's such a privilege because you get to chat to so many different people um, about this. So I've got all of that saved. I've got it done. But you might be saying, right, I want to, um, I want to record my interview on Zoom, Zoom the, the software that we're using now, not Zoom the recorder. Um, so I want to record it that way. That means I don't have to buy anything. So you press record and then you have your interview. Then at the end of the interview, you end it and it says, right, I'm saving it all. Um, and I'm going to save it here. And you can say, right, I'm going to save it here. Um, and then you can, um, let me see if I can find where I've put it. Um, where did I put them on? Because I did do one earlier and I've put it down somewhere on the, on the file. Um, let me find them on there. So today, there we are, I've got, um, it will save it as something called an M4A. Um, and I'm going to find it, I've lost, I've put, I've got everywhere nice and saved, nice and neat for, for showing everybody. And now I've lost, lost the thing that I've actually saved. So I'm going to um, see if I can find, um, Oh, it's not going to do it, is it? It's not going to play ball. And as soon as I come off this, it will show me straight away where I've got it. Ah, right. Yes, I've got it. I've got it. No problem. Right. So, Reese, yes. Um, I've just looked on Google, and apparently you there is an option in the settings under recording that enables you to record a separate audio file for each participant then that would be very useful to do yes i haven't i haven't experimented with that because i don't use it i, I use these um Fair enough. Reese, that's your homework <laughs> is to try that um, i'll have a look at that as well for next week as well to. yeah um that would be really useful so Basically, so let me show you um, what I've actually got here. If you, um, if you do recording, and I've saved it into a different folder, and it's got a big set of date at the top, and I recorded basically me saying one, two, three, four, five. Um, and so there it is, uh, me saying one, two, three, four, five. Um, there's a video of me doing it. It saves three, three different files. The one you want is audio only because there's no point loading the, the video in because you just, you, it's a podcast. You don't want to do that. So if I have that one, I can play that M4A and it will just sort of play. Now that's with Zoom. The trouble is with, with Zoom, Zoom the software, it saves it into this M4A format and it's horrible. It, 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 it's, it's not a nice format to actually use. If you save it with the Zoom recorder, it saves it as something called a WAV file, which anything can read, and it just, just loads in nicely. So if you have Zoom going, um, let me stop sharing and move to this screen. When you go into Audacity and you say, right, can you load up the Zoom recording that you did? You get this horrible message saying, FFmpeg not found. Audacity, and this is again where you start thinking, oh, for heaven's sakes, really? What am I meant to do now? Um, and it says to use FFmpeg, you've got to go to da, 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 and download the libraries. This is where people usually stop and you think, oh, I can't do this. I'm not going to do it. And so you click on OK, even though you're not OK. Um, and then you go. Okay, so I was in the Mac and I go, it's not, it wasn't actually in where it said it was, edit preferences and libraries. It was just up in preferences and I, and I found libraries on there. And you find this thing that says the lame MP3 export library and the FFmpeg import export library. And at first it says, 
library not found? The lame one it's got, but the library is not found for FM MPEG. Now then, the reason it's got this is because, you, you don't have to care, but I'll tell you what the reason is, is that all, all of these um, public domain software that's made by groups of people for free around the world, um, they'll put it together and put it in there. Now, for actually generating an MP3, uses commercial software, uses some commercial proprietary file format that you should be having to pay somebody for. But um, they can't put it into Audacity because otherwise the lawyers would block them and say, no, you can't, you can't have this software, you can't use it. Um, so there's this other library called the FFmpeg that somebody else has made. You've got to link it. There's one extra step. You only have to do it once, but it's one little thing that you've got to do with Audacity. And this is how you do it. So I'm going to go back into Audacity. And where is Audacity? I've got so many things going at the moment here. I think I've closed it down. There we are. Let me, let me find Audacity again. So back into Zoom. Audacity. There we are. So on the Mac, this is. I click on Audacity in the menu at the top. And then one of the options says Preferences. And I get the message down here, devices, playback, recording, all of this sort of stuff. And you choose libraries. And it told you that in the little message that came up. And lo and behold, now it says the FMPEG library version is all that. That's because this is what I did. I actually pressed the button that said download. If you press the button that says download, you get to, it loads up this website. So here we go, back to the website, you get to this. I'm just showing you um, because you, when you do this, you'll think, all right, yep, that's where it went to. So I press download, you get to this. And you look, are you on Windows? Are you on a Mac? Are you using Linux? If you're on a Mac, you click on installing and updating Audacity on the Mac. And it's all of this sort of writing, all of this, yes, yes, yes. You need the lame is now built in, yes. Um, and you can go down and then it says installing FFmpeg, yep. And this is the bit that threw me. That little sentence there for full instructions, oh no, um, you've got to go and go down and you click on, here we go, M4A, there is a bit where you can just click on it and it takes you and you can go. So for full instructions, oh yeah, it is. For full instructions, go to that. So you click on that and it says to go to the external download page and you've got to download it and it actually downloads and runs. So you go to the download page, look for that one, FFmpeg, that. It does tell you, to be fair to you, uh, but it doesn't make it easy. And I had to click on that one to download it and then install it and then start Audacity again and it just worked. Um, so, it, but it, they can't put it into the Audacity in the first place. You've got to go through all those steps. If you can bear it, I'm going to go through the Windows version. So I go into libraries. I click on download and it's taken me to, I have to keep coming out to choose a different window. So it opens up a different window. I'm back in this window here. FFmpeg for Windows. Install, update, Audacity for Windows. There we go. Read all the way down. Yes, I see all that. Says the thing about lame, keep going down. And then it says, for full instructions, please see FFmpeg for Windows. It's so easy to miss this. Click on it. And then it just says, go to the FFmpeg download page and run that program. Then it has it in there. You only have to do that once. Um, so, you know, if... <laughs> I'm not one of be. if you've got somebody, if, if you don't feel like doing it, um, well, there's, two, there's a couple of options. If, if you can do it, 
crack on, do it. If you if you can't do it, but there's somebody about who can, who, can, who likes this sort of stuff, um, then get them to just go through saying, look, please click on this button, do what it says for me, then give me a shout. I'll be making a cup of tea. Um, the other option is if you really are stuck and there's no one around to help you, um, I can go through it with you. Uh, I can like one of those disaster movies where they phone the control power, tower and I'll help you land the plane safely and everyone will get off. So I can walk through with you to get this done. Because once it's done, you don't need to do it again till you get a new computer. Um, and then once you've done that, let me stop sharing. You can go into Audacity. Right, I'll cancel that. I'm going to delete that track, delete that track, and I'll delete that track. And then I can go file, import audio. And I'll go onto my desktop. I'll go into the Zoom recording and I'll find audio only, M4A. And um, <laughs> I'm, I'm, ge I'm guessing, Trees, when they've got the two, it'll be more than one track, I would think. So I would just highlight them both and click on open. And there you are, that's me saying one, two, three, four, one, two, three. There's big gaps in between, but that ain't a problem to us because I can use my eye bar, highlight that, chop it away. Yep, highlight that and chop that away. Um, I could also think, oh, right. So let's just see what it sounds like. One, two, three, four, five. There you are, it's great. Um, I can also, ah, oh, right, this is my new, I'm gonna import some audio. Let's go to downloads. Let's get the little thing at the beginning. Open that, yep, there it is. Use my time shift, move that over there. So here we go, my first one ready. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> and it just puts it there. Now, the, the, the unfortunate thing, if I just record it as one track, I would have both myself and the interviewee on that one track. Um, I'll, look at, I'll look into what Reese uh, said on the Google thing by having different tracks. That would make things much, much easier because then you can do the things like chopping bits out. But even then, even if you do just have one track, you can still just, if somebody loses their way, you can just say, all right, should we start that one again? I'll ask the question again. You can chop that whole chunk out and put it together. And then, as I say, when you're done, you've got your music in, you've got your um, interview done, you can just get a file, export, export, export it as an MP3. And this message comes up and then you can give it a name, test, MP3, force it to mono and save it. Your tracks will be mixed down and exported as one mono file. Yep, okay. And it says, now what is done, you can, when you save your MP3, you can encode in it um, information about yourself. It's a little bit of copyright. Um, now at the moment, um, it's picked up the copyright from Jimmy Fontanez um, for his Dans on de Passion, which is great. Um, but I'm going to say, no, it's me. So it was me. And the track title is called Test. And the album title is going to be the Test Podcast. Oops. And the genre is not jazz and blues. I'll try and get rid of all of that. Okay, I, to be honest, when I do audition, I don't put any of this stuff in, but because it's there, I'll put it in. And then click on okay. And usually then it'll take quite a few minutes if you've got a half hour track to actually mix it all down into one MP3 file. So I'm gonna stop that sharing on there. So now what I've got on my desktop I should have, in fact, let me put it in a, um, if I put it in a folder, I'll show you where it's gone. 
So I'm going to minimize that, minimize that, minimize you, minimize you. Um, no, not minimize you. And I'm going to put my test into here. Right, sharing the screen again. There it is. So I've got my um, I've got my original audio recorded from the Zoom, the video which I'm not using, and then my mixed together test track. One, two, three, four, five. And it's just an MP3, just one MP3 file um, with the music in there and everything mixed together. So, <laughs> how do you feel? I've, I'm, I've blitzed you with two hours of an awful lot of stuff. I do realise that. Um, but one of the things that I find is that you may not remember any of it, um, or you might remember the, the gist of it. But when you try it, it might think, oh, I've trodden this path before. Yeah, I recognise that bit. Yeah, I see that bit. But also it might be, I'm, you know, you could get back to me and say, John, I'm stuck at this. I can't do this little bit. But at least you know the process. That's the way of recording, setting up an interview, recording the interview, and then actually mixing, getting it into Audacity, editing it, and then mixing it down to make one final file that is the thing that actually downloads onto your phone. How to actually get it from your computer onto people's phones, Alexas, <laughs> do you know the number of people? I, I don't know if you're one of the people who has them, but <clears throat> you normally talk and you say, oh, da, 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 da. but as soon as you mention the thing, you go, Alexa, just in case it starts booting up in the, in the, in the room next to you. Uh, but all of those sort of things that you've got um, how you actually do that is the subject for next week. So if you could have a go at downloading Audacity um, and actually trying to get some audio into it, um, that would help. Um, you don't have to. If you're not, <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, they're in the certificate. I don't think there's a certificate, Maria, um, but I don't, there's no certificate. Um, but if you get to the end of that, it will help you to understand what what happens um, when you actually syndicate it afterwards out to all the different things. <laughs> now you really do need a cup of tea, I can imagine. <laughs> Are there any questions, just um, other ones that, that burning questions for now? Doesn't matter if not. Oh, Reese, you've got your hand up again, yeah. Yeah, um, okay, two things. Um, one, that uh, LibSing um, site that, um, where you upload the stuff, I'm assuming you you need to have an account on that site before you can upload? I'm going to go through how to set up the account and all the settings for the account. So, you know, That's quite so involved. That. That's what um, I'm going to... I'm spending an hour, yeah. Uh, are we... Um, I mean, are we welcome to, you know, to try out, experiment with alternative means of oh, absolutely. Um, editing? Absolutely. Just, uh, of course. Yeah. And, and it would be very useful. And if you find something, do you know what? This works for me. You show us and you, you can sh show us. Actually, after all of this, now this is where you're going to absolutely kick me. Um, there is a free app um, on um, iPhone and I'm sure Android called Anchor as in the anchor that you weigh when a ship's coming in or going out or whatever they do. Um, and so you have anchor and it will, you can record a podcast on your phone and it will also then syndicate it out on their own little network. Um, so there are, that you can do that and it's free. Um, but, um, and, and, and it also minimal, you're not having to do, there is editing in it, but you do it all on the phone. Um, I don't like doing editing on the phone, but a lot of people do, um, particularly things like video and stuff like that. So um, th there are lots of other ways of doing it. Yeah. Okay. Maria. <laughs> them into silence. I have. <laughs> well, thank you, John. Thanks, that was very good. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. No problem. Okay, so I appreciate uh, hopefully it. this time next week, well, two hours before, three, three o'clock next week, you'll all be able to make it back. And um, I'm sure there'll be tons of questions as they, they're awake all night thinking about this. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, don't worry if you get really stuck and you can't progress, even if you just think, I couldn't do it. Um, we can talk about it next week. Yeah. Good. Okay. okay. Well, thank you, everyone. Okay. And, uh, see you next week. Okay. Thank you very much, John. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.